So, since I believe tomorrow to be a rather busy day, I'm uh, record now for tomorrow so that I don't have to do it and so that I can chill a bit and do whatever. Even though the next day I'm uh, not having to work, but tomorrow I have. So yeah, um, let me see what we can find on Reddit. <laughs> what else should it be? Uplifting books for a teenager who feels lost and empty in life. Let's actually see. So I turned 19 this month and I've been struggling with an identity crisis. I know I'm still young, but I feel this crushing sense of regret, anxiety and helplessness over my wasted youth and the seemingly bleak future. I'm tired of being depressed and stagnant, but I've never been able to make a lasting positive change. I know books can't cure me or anything, but it helps. Please recommend books that can give me hope and comfort and inspire me to live life to the fullest. Anxious People by Frederick Backman, The House in the Cerulean. What? C E R U L E A N C by T J Clune. As I said, books can't solve everything, but these are immersively comforting and warm books, and they definitely touch on some of the feelings you mentioned above. Wishing you all the best. Thank you. I've seen the letter book recommended many times here, so I'm even more excited to read it now and anxious people too. I found anxious people very uplifting, touching and relatable. I'm going through a really rough time right now and my dad gave me the advice to reread books that I read when I was younger because it would bring me comfort. I would actually say this as well, especially, you know, as I'm thinking back, I would say that I didn't grasp books that I read back in the days at all. Like, just really at all, you know, especially, um, I mean, 1984 by George Orwell, I've read it, I also had to make a presentation about it, I did it quite well, and I have um, summarized it also quite detailed, but, well, I didn't get it, you know, I didn't get the whole point of it, Maybe when I read it now, I will get it and it would actually be quite interesting, you know, I'm not gonna lie. It would really be quite interesting. But yeah, the book by Ellen Watts. Second this, and while we're on the Ellen Watts topic, the wisdom of insecurity is also great. You can find Ellen Watts' talk on the internet too if you want to get a vibe for him. His talks are better than his writing IMO. What does even IMO mean? I don't know. He's very gifted. He's a very gifted speaker. Well, I do actually want to check out the house in the Kulin Sea. Let's see what it is all about. That's actually very, 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 very well rated on goodreads.com. 4.5 stars out of 5. This is like really insane. It's actually a, a fantasy book. Well, Shores, fantasy, fiction, LGBT, romance, adult, young adult, audiobook, GLBT, bigger than queer, or maybe it's an error, I don't know, fantasy, bigger than slash error, I still don't know, magic and then contemporary. To see what your friends thought of this book, please sign up. Is this book appropriate for a nine-year-old? I would really say that it depends on a nine-year-old. I read Carrie when I was nine. My mother knew that I could handle it. Does this book include shape shifting? I'm asking because of the OWLS rather than prompt. This answer contains spoilers. <laughs> Thank you. Nope, 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 nope. The first rating actually being a one star rating. I'll be honest, I read it and I loved it. Writing was great and everything. Then months after reading it, I discovered that this book was inspired by Canada's 60s scoop. So what? Reread just as Soul Manning the second time around. Well, what is the book actually about? A magical island, a dangerous task, a burning secret. Linus Baker leads a quiet, solitary life. At 40, at 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records. As a caseworker at the department in 
charge of magical youth. He spends his days overseeing the well-being of children in government-sanctioned orphanages. In, well, that's actually more to it. Um, when Linus is unexpectedly summoned by extremely upper management, which might be a company uh, because everything is with an uppercase, he's given a curious and highly classified assignment to travel to Marcius Island or Fenich, I don't know, where six dangerous children reside. A gnome, a, sp <laughs> a sprite, a vivran, an unidentifiable green blob, uh, where Pom Pomeranian and the Antichrist. Linus must set aside his fears and determine whether or not they are likely to bring about the end of days. But the children aren't the only secret the island keeps. Their caretaker is a charming and en enigmatic Arthur Parnassus, who will do anything to keep his ward safe. As Arthur and Linus grow closer, long-held secrets are exposed and Linus must make a choice, destroy a home or watch the world burn. An enchanting story masterfully told, the house in the Cerulean Sea is about the profound experience of discovering an unlikely family in an unexpected place and realizing that family is yours. You know what? Um, just because I, I thought about it, before and it is just really off topic, but I wonder can I show us more show us something that I really like also when it comes to series and movies is gore. As dumb and as strange as it may sound, but for me it, it, it depends on the degree, it depends on various factors, but when um, a series like well most of the series but also movies when they contain gore, I would rate them a bit higher. You know, it could also be too much or it can be too much. You know, when just every single frame is a cut off head, like explicitly uh, just shown and whatnot. But I, I, for whatever reason, still enjoy it. Um, and so let me see. Find a short by name. Can I just type in gore? Is there something like that? Shora's Gore, um, indeed. Gore books, uh, the girl with all the gifts. Jack Ketchum, is this like a joke? Attack on Titan, Stephen King, Misery. And um, that's actually quite a bunch. Best horror books from unknown authors. Fun fact, um, I don't like horror too much, not gonna lie. The goriest books ever. I kind of feel a bit bad for just being so off topic now. American Psycho, The Girl Next Door. That's actually very interesting. Is it an old book? I just know The Million Next Door, which is an self help book. Uh, Equisite Corpse of Season, Books of Blood, Carrie. Oh, there we have it. Carrie by Stephen King. Um, apparently, Stephen King is actually a pretty, <laughs> a pretty bloody writer. Survivor, let's the right on in Causa, the Resurrectionist, Infected, Big Head. Well, what about, you know, graphic novels, to be honest? Well, I think that I'm gonna uh, search for that in my leisure time and then and, and just not <laughs> necessarily publicly, so to speak. Anyway, I hope that I've been able to, to share some things of purpose for you and i'm gonna see you next time so bye bye well i just realized that it is only like um nine minutes in so let's get back to 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 to, to the subreddit um blue by patricia levy i suggest trail books at your age you can change your perspective easily by getting out and seeing the world Good luck. East of Eden by John Steinbeck. While I wouldn't categorize it as uplifting, well, why the fuck will you read it then in such a situation? It is a good book, uh, a good look at living life with or without purpose and how wasted youth doesn't mean a wasted life. East of Eden or Eden. But, uh, y y you know what? You know what? I'm such an asshole. I'm so <laughs> I know that one shouldn't be talking about oneself in such a way, but I'm such a piece of shit in terms of 
just always reading, well, actually, indeed, reading about books, um, how great books are, and still often not finding, like, kind of a re... Well, not necessarily reason, but, you know, for the lack of a better word, reason to, 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 to do something smart. Even though it would be highly smart and highly great if I just read more. In the time that I've been wasting the whole fucking entire week of me having quite nothing to do, I could have read like a million of books. Might have had to invest some money. Might have had, you know. But, you know, why not? Like, it, it could really put my mind on ease in, in so many ways, I would say. You know what? I'm gonna do that live. And it should possibly be one that I can get from the archive.org. You know, I just don't want to rip them off somewhere. Some bullshit. Um, and possibly be something of value to me in the terms of, well, like things that I, you know, I don't know if, well, let, let's look at the self-help section, what we can find. I actually wanted to say something that highly is rated and suggested and, you know, possibly quite old so that I can even find it on the archive. But yeah, a flaw in human judgment. Giveaways, discussions from a beginner, related chores, non-fiction. So, oh yeah, I forgot. The woman they could not silence, house of sticks, how the word is passed, unwell women, um, uh, Shunathan reading giveaways, giveaway dates, countries available, US, hmm. US, US, well. Most read this week, Atomic Habits, Educated, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, Untamed by Glenn and Doyle. I don't know that one. Trevor Noah, Born a Crime, John Green, The Athropocene Review, The Comfort Book, a small book for anyone in search of hope, looking for a path to a more meaningful life or indeed of encouragement. Happiness occurs when you forget what you're expected to be. Actually, it sounds pretty good. Not gonna lie. Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Also actually a pretty good one, apparently. What Happened to You? Uh, conversations on Trauma, Resilience and Healing. Well, actually, the, the, the book of Conf the Comfort book. Uh, when was it written? Published July 6th, 2021. Hmm. Probably not gonna find that book on the archive. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> really not gonna do so. What about psychology? What about that? What I can find here? New releases? No. Most read. Lists. Best cognitive science books. Borderline personality. Best self-help books. Depression and mental illness books. Aries psychology and or counseling doctor. Doctoral student should read. Maybe I, maybe I should actually read Man's Search for Meaning again. It's such a good one. Uh, the Man Who Mistook His Wife for a, a Hat. Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience. Well, what is this about? Psychologist, blah, 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 I can't pronounce the name. Investigations of optimal experience have revealed that what makes an experience generally satisfying is a state of consciousness called flow. During flow, people typically experience deep enjoyment, creativity, and a total involvement with life. Uh, published January the 1st, 1990. Is this another mumbo jumbo pseudo scientific book? Does it contain any scientific evidence? There are large notes and references section at the book back of the book listing, many legitimate research papers suggesting that the contents of the books are fairly legitimate. If you're skeptical about anything you read in a book, you can look up the research paper that supposedly proves it. Um, it is like a research paper with detailed numbers and methodology discussed or a book condensing all of it. He is clearly a subject matter expert, but does a great job making it easy enough for a layman to read while also making it possible for enthusiasts my notes including liberal use of direct quotes um something to also think about
Well, anyway, I don't want to just talk about some bullshit here. Gonna see you the next time. Bye-bye.